Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busy, and it's time for a review of the new Future of the Left album, How to Stop Your Brain in an Accident. Future of the Left is a very cheeky, experimental rock band hailing from the UK, and this is their fourth full-length album. And unfortunately, they're one of those bands that is slightly haunted by the successes of their past, or more specifically, the successes of guitarist and vocalist Andy Falkus, who was actually in a band preceding Future of the Left called McCluskey. He used to front them as well. And they dropped a couple pretty essential post-hardcore albums in the mid-2000s. McCluskey disbanded, but it didn't take Falco long to reform things under this Future of the Left name with Jack Egglestone, the band's drummer. And right now they're currently working with Julia Ruzica and Jimmy Watkins. And even though the band name and the band lineup that Falco and Jack have been working with since the mid and early aughts has changed, the focus has still remained on post-hardcore music, noise rock, and indie rock with driving bass lines, wild, noisy guitar phrasing and riffs, and lyrics and vocals that are pretty eccentric. Now, Future of the Left's debut had a lot of the same rawness that McCluskey used to have, but the band's ambition brought them onto their next record, hoping to make something that was a little bit more refined, well-recorded, dynamic, and diverse. But the band's experimentation and ambition continued onto their next LP, but maybe to a degree where it felt like more songs on here were kind of losing their rock edge and their aggression, especially with more keyboards and softer tracks kind of coming into the picture. Still, this album featured roughly the same personality that's always made the band appealing, and it is worth checking out if you're new to Future of the Left. However, with this newer LP of theirs, which is actually the result of a successful crowdfunding campaign, the band brings that rock edge back in a really hard way with some songs that are Future of the Left's heaviest tracks yet. The very first track that kicks this entire LP off is one of those songs with incredibly low-end driven and, and jagged guitar riffs that are just jutting in between stints of silence. Sounds like something the Melvins would have hammered out in the 90s with a very, very sludgy finish with a lot of these riffs ringing out instead of playing in this very hard staccato fashion. And of course, even though the song feels very Melvins inspired, it does uniquely ring out as future of the lefts with just how off-kilter the riffing is and, of course, the vocals. More heavy sludge kind of comes through on the song Future Child Embarrassment Matrix. However, this song is not really a highlight for me outside of how weirdly sexual the lyrics are, just because I don't really find much of the singing or the very monolithic riffing to be all that catchy or memorable. Though it does stand out on this record and does bring this thing some variety sonically. To sort of contrast these heavier spots, Future of the Left does bring some very fast, nimble, catchy tracks on here. Very well-crafted, concise, and clever little rock tunes with a lot of personality, like the track Johnny Borrell, Afterlife, whose chorus is maybe one of my favorites on here. Just a boy, just a boy, just a boy. With this start-stop syncopated riff on the verses. And again, very, very, very cheeky vocals and lyrics. There are some misses on the sweeter side of this record, though, like the male gaze, which really kind of feels like a Pixies tune with Falco's vocals on top of it. And then The Real Meaning of Christmas, another very fun song melodically and very straightforward and accessible, but to me doesn't really stand out as bold or interesting on this album simply because of how weird every other track surrounding this song is. Aside from that, I love songs on here like Donnie of the Decks, a killer track with another catchy chorus, he was good with his hair, very snarky verses that depict the life of this DJ character, and the song has a really absurd refrain toward the back end, the stink of sex is undeniable. And then there's the song Things to Say to a Friendly Policeman, which has this killer, killer kazoo melody on its chorus. There are just so many songs on here that are catchy and aggressive rock tracks with loads of personality and quirk like the two tracks on here that are obviously very strong pieces of entertainment industry satire, like Singing of the Bone Saws, which is this very properly delivered piece of spoken word on top of a very grimy bass guitar riff. Talking about how the music industry is tricking you into being excited and making you be afraid of missing out. And then there's the track How to Spot a Record Company, which has one of my favorite refrains on the back end of the track. How to spot 
despite a record company. With a bunch of somewhat bitter, just angry lyrics throughout the track about disappointing labels and disappointing fans and ugh. Might have been a little bit of a reflection upon some moments in the past of McCluskey or even Future of the Left. And there are some real left hooks on here too, like the somewhat teary-eyed and absurdly worded French Lessons, which is a, kind of a soft-willed indie ballad that uh, that I like a lot. And there is the song Something Happened Too, which is dreary as well, but also switches between moments of very sad piano and bass, and then these joyous guitar chords playing against people cheering. It's one of these moments where Future of the Left is not only great at playing with sound, sound play, but also mood play with how the song really transitions from being to in a matter of seconds. And the closer on here, another acoustically driven track, and I do like the tone of it a lot, especially with Falco's vocals, his lyrics kind of just seeping out between what, what sounds like clenched teeth. And I do love the ending on here too, with the harmonized vocals and just how together and joyous and celebratory they sound, but this song to me is an example of, of, of an issue that Future of the Left has at times, and that is drawing out moments for a long period of time that are just not that interesting interesting, because I can't say I'm totally in love with the faux, backwoods, dirty, down, country guitar playing that's on this track. It does get kind of stale before the band even gets a chance to add extra instrumentation to the mix. Still, despite those complaints, I do feel like this is a great record from Future of the Left, one of the better rock records of this year. This album has sharp, heavy, very raw, straightforward, and dry production that I like a lot. It's just clear as a bell. Very good playing and execution on this thing, and this record has some great lyrics and personality and vocals, which really has been the most consistent element of Future of the Left's career in terms of quality. Really the worst thing about this record is that some of the songs on here just pale in comparison to others, but there are 14 tracks on here, and none that I really strongly disliked. I'm feeling a decent two strong eight, on this thing, transition. If you've given this LP a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Future of the Left, forever.